Hi, my name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create and edit requirements using the Enterprise Architect Specification Manager. Let's examine how some organisations visualise and manage their requirements. Unfortunately, some traditional approaches to requirements management include using a whiteboard or storing a series of paper-based documents. A whiteboard can help visualise requirements and their connections to other elements. Text documents are easy to read, distribute and understand. Yet both of these techniques are not sufficient for requirements management in a complex modern world. Whiteboards and paper-based requirements can often result in poor traceability, lost requirements and flawed software design. Whiteboards have a limited workspace and much of the information can be easily erased, misunderstood or lost forever when people leave a meeting. Paper-based documents are cumbersome, with too much information that is difficult to search. There is no capacity to include links to relevant media or websites. As a result, paper-based documents often lose currency and end up in someone's desk drawer. Imagine if requirements could be managed using the simplicity of text and a whiteboard without losing the benefits of visualisation, traceability and team collaboration. Enterprise Architect has long offered a superior solution, where requirements are shared and discussed amongst the team via a shared model. The Specification Manager in Enterprise Architect provides the convenience of a modern-day word processor, helping to place requirements in context, providing tools for traceability, change management, documentation, element discussions, and team collaboration, all from a single view. Enterprise Architect has the added flexibility of linking each requirement to sounds, video, presentations, word documents, spreadsheets, and additional model elements. In this webinar, I'll use the Specification Manager to demonstrate how easy it is to create and edit requirements. I'll also leverage a number of different tools for traceability, change management, and collaboration. Let's begin by examining the key menu items found within the Specification Manager. Select the View menu to access the Specification Manager. Use Toggle Package View to show or hide the Package View navigation pane. This will show you the package hierarchy of the current Specification Package. The Specification Package menu is used to open a Specification Package. Create a new package under the current Project Browser Package selection. Select a destination for the new specification package. Locate the current specification package in the Project Browser. Apply auto naming and level numbering where appropriate. The specification type menu allows you to view and manage elements that match a selected type. In this particular example, Enterprise Architect automatically filters the specification package in order to display results that are requirements. Let's have a look at an example. I'm going to open our specification package and all the requirements are now displayed on screen. The elements in bold represent the names of each element. The text underneath represents the notes for that corresponding element. Other important information such as the stereotype, status, difficulty and priority are displayed as columns. To make changes to the name of an element, simply place the cursor at the desired location and start typing. It is that easy to edit the name of elements and notes model editing with the simplicity of a word processor. Colour highlights are used to identify which element is being edited. 
The Specification Manager is a simple document-based interface to a selected package in the model, providing the means of creating and reviewing elements as text representations of objects that are found in the model. I can right-click on any word to undertake a quick search. I can use the context menu to add new elements or children as desired. This approach feels very simple and does not require an in-depth knowledge of UML or modelling. People are free to simply write and maintain requirements. I can edit element properties using a simple drop-down list. Switch easily from one element to another with a single mouse click or keystroke. Show and in place edit the current status of a number of properties for each entry. Work on element entries as paragraph text in the same way that you would edit a document using a word processor. This includes copying and dragging text from an external file into the Specification Manager and importing data from an external spreadsheet, such as a CSV file. Enterprise Architect will automatically highlight any spelling mistakes as I go, allowing me to quickly scan long paragraphs of text to spot any obvious errors. I can scroll over and review hundreds of requirements with ease and edit with the convenience of a word processor. I shall now open another specification package that contains a set of functional requirements for managing users of an online bookstore. Collapsible regions are used to identify child elements. If I examine requirement number 16, Add Users, you'll note that it has two child elements. In addition to the drop-down property lists, this set of requirements also reveals a number of different All Indicator icons that allow us to leverage tools for testing, traceability, collaboration and much, much more from a single convenient view. The green tick icon can help us examine any test that's associated with a given requirement. With a few mouse clicks, we can examine who run the test, if it passed, and who checked the test. We can edit test details and save changes. The next indicator icon shows a file that is associated with the requirement. This file could be an image, sound recording, video, or a comprehensive 100-page report justifying the need for the requirement. In this particular example, we have a simple PNG image. Each file can have associated notes and can be easily launched from Enterprise Architect. The next indicator icon is used to examine project resources and identify who has been allocated the job of implementing a given requirement. For this particular requirement, Jane is only 35% complete, having spent four hours on the task. The Relationship Indicator allows us to examine traceability to understand the impact that changing this element may have on the rest of the model. Using the Traceability Diagram, I can drill down to a specific element and find where that element is located in other diagrams. This allows you to leverage Enterprise Architect's powerful diagram and visualisation tools with a few simple mouse clicks. We can also identify any linked documents within the model. Please note the difference between a linked document that's stored within the model and a link to a file that's held externally to the model. To briefly review, when an indicator is displayed, you can double click on the icon to immediately access it. There are a number of different all indicator icons, including a relationship, a resource, a risk, 
maintenance item, test item, a file, a discussion, and a linked document. Please look at the Enterprise Architect Help for more information on each indicator. Now I'll switch to use cases and limit the display to elements of the use case type. The test plan unfortunately does not contain a company logo, which I'll discuss in more detail later in this webinar. The Specification Manager provides options to open a relationship matrix, create matrix profiles and identify any gaps in your existing requirements. Create new relationships with the click of a button. Access package baselines and auditing tools to determine who has changed a model and the nature of that change. You can also access the audit trail project management, maintenance, testing, and you can view a package as a Gantt chart. The Gantt chart helps us assign resources and visualize deadlines for existing requirements or project tasks. The next menu option provides the ability to generate documentation from your specification. There are also options to import and export CSV files. There are additional options for Q&A metrics and to spell check the current package. The visual styles menu can be used to configure the appearance of the specification manager, including simple options like hiding notes and enabling collapsible regions. The final menu option provides access to the Enterprise Architect user guide. Now let's switch gears and look at communication tools that can help improve and refine our requirements management. I notice that our test plan does not contain a suitable company logo and I want to communicate this fact to members of my team. I can use element discussions to talk about a particular requirement. Using the Dockable Element Discussions window, you can develop a discussion on or review of an individual element. This makes it easy to locate, view, and contribute to a discussion about a selected element. This approach ensures that the discussion will not be lost and is always placed in context. It is clear which staff member posted the comment and the time when it was submitted. It is also easy to reply and review a threaded discussion on any element. In addition to element discussions, I also want to create a formal review document. When you are managing the work of a project team, it is useful to have a mechanism for coordinating and guiding the work that the team members are required to do on the elements in the specification package, such as a review document. You can generate this type of document quickly and simply within the Specification Manager to be distributed, accessed and read through the Team Review Facility. I'll use an existing template to create a checklist. The checklist is now displayed on screen. I'll update the checklist to include a reference to the missing logo on our test plan and I'll assign the project to our project manager to ensure that it is completed in a timely fashion. By default, review documents are stored in topics in a special category of the team review called formal reviews. They can be accessed through the specification manager at any time. Finally, model mail can be used to directly communicate with any member of the project team. This allows you to communicate with members of your team without ever having to leave the Enterprise Architect development environment. Within Team Review, I can also set the review status of each item to ensure that it can be easily identified, read and reviewed. Switching back to requirements, I shall demonstrate how the Specification Manager can be used to produce high quality documentation. Enterprise Architect supports a number of convenient formats including rich text format, PDF and DOCX. It is also possible to publish as HTML, 
allowing your specification to be shared on a local intranet or via the web. The Generate Documentation dialog is used to create a report tailored to your specific needs. Choose from a range of pre-built templates that can help save time. Create a simple model report that contains a cover page and table of contents. Generate professional reports with a few button clicks. Looking at the model report, you'll note that it is possible to apply your own corporate design and even change the page orientation within a report. In this webinar, I've shown how to manage requirements using a simple text-based interface. We've learned how to quickly identify relationships, link documents, properties, tests, and much more. We've also learned how to leverage tools for traceability, change management, documentation, and team collaboration from a single view. For more information on the Specification Manager, or to download a free 30-day trial of Enterprise Architect, please visit www.sparksystems.com.